Hi, I'm Edison Tan from PE Micro, and today we will be discussing Secure Boot for NXP's i.mx RT processors. These new crossover processors are making a big impact in industrial, automotive, and Internet of Things applications. In this video, we will give an overview of Secure Boot concepts and introduce the new PE Micro Secure Boot utility, which is designed to help users easily enable this feature on their own products. We will go over security options provided by the Secure Boot utility to ensure that your products are protected before shipping to customers. The core principle of Secure Boot is that an embedded system should only run trusted, authorized code. This authorization is provided in the form of a digital signature using asymmetric cryptography. i.mxrt processors can be configured to only run code if a valid signature is detected. Anytime the code is modified, a new signature is required. The signing process requires a signing certificate and the user application. This user application is produced by a compiler toolchain such as NXP's MCU Expresso IDE. The digital signature is appended to the user application, which creates the signed boot image. The signed boot image can additionally be encrypted to prevent attackers from seeing plain text code and data stored in Flash. This is important not only to protect intellectual property, but also prevent illegal duplication of a product. In this process, we begin with the same signed boot image from before. An AES encrypted boot key is used to encrypt the signed boot image to create the final output, which is the use application that is both signed and encrypted. The boot images we just discussed will be programmed into flash memory, but this is not sufficient to enable secure boot. The i.mx RT processor needs additional information to determine if a signature is valid and also how to decrypt the data in flash. This is accomplished by writing to the one-time programmable e-fuses inside the processor. This diagram shows some examples that get programmed into the e-fuses. A hash of the signing certificates, the encrypted boot key, and additional security options, which we will cover shortly. Once both the e-fuses and the flash are programmed, secure boot will be enabled. Enabling secure boot can be a challenging task especially for first-time users. There are many distinct steps involved, and it is very difficult to narrow down the problem when things are not working. PE Micro is launching the new Secure Boot utility to help make this process easier for users. Our goal with this utility is to reduce the complexity of Secure Boot by creating a friendly user interface that provides real-time feedback to the user as options are changed. Let's take a look at how the Secure Boot utility fits into the process. For inputs, it takes in the compiled user application and a PE key file, which helps users manage their security information. This one file conveniently stores the signing certificates, the AES keys, and secure JTAG passwords used for secure boot. After selecting the desired options in the secure boot utility, two files are produced, one that represents the signed or encrypted boot image, and one that holds the eFuse values. These two files are then used by existing P micro tools to program the flash and e-fuses of the user's board. For production programming, there are additional security concerns that need to be addressed. As we saw previously, the e-fuses contain very sensitive security information. If any of these values are read, the security of the product would be compromised. Before any products are shipped to customers, we recommend enabling two security settings in the Secure Boot utility. Normally, an attacker can use the debug capabilities of the processor to read out the e-fuses as shown here. The Secure Boot utility has an option to enable Secure JTAG, which requires the user to know the right password before debug mode is allowed. Without the password, no debug access is possible and the e-fuses cannot be read. For authorized users, the PE key file containing the correct password can be given to the PE Micro tools, which will properly authenticate and allow debug access to a production board. This can be helpful for future reprogramming or diagnostics. For even more security, the sensitive e-fuses 
can be locked. This prohibits any read or write to those fuses, even if there is debug access. Since there is no need for a developer to look at these eFuse values, we highly recommend enabling the lock setting in a production environment. Although the previous security options help protect products once they've entered the field, there is an additional security vulnerability during the production programming process itself. In a PC-based programming setup, a computer is used to program the IMXRT processor by running a batch file or command line utility using USB or UART. This potentially exposes sensitive security values, such as the encrypted boot key or secure JTAG password, since these values are typically stored in plain format files on the computer. This is particularly important to companies who outsource production programming to third-party contract manufacturers. P-Microcyclone programmers address this problem by encapsulating all programming operations into a single encrypted SAP file stored onto the cyclone. This file is created by the developer, and it includes the eFuse and Flash data along with all of the programming steps. Since only the cyclone can decrypt this SAP file, the security values are no longer exposed, and the result is a secure production environment. Thank you so much for watching. For more information on Secure Boot and i.mxrt programming, please visit us at pemicro.com.